before my detox that I've gone okay. back and forth. Like I am a, I was a habit, habitual taker backer. Habitual lies. <laughs> habitual <laughs> taker backer. That should be the name of the episode. Nah. Nah. That's, that's, that's getting down. That's getting real. It might be the name of the episode. Habitual taker backer. Right. might be the, might be the name of the episode. <laughs> taker backer. <laughs> The quicker picker up or take her back. <laughs> Let's go, baby. You're now tuned in. You're now tuned in. You're now tuned in. You're now tuned in. You are now tuned in. To the Juxtaposition Podcast. Welcome to episode 67 of the Juxtaposition Podcast, oh. a.k.a. the Extraordinary Nobodies, a.k.a. the Starting Five, a.k.a. the Five Heartbeats, a.k.a. Four Heartbeats in the Possible, a.k.a. the Positivity Podcast. My name is Varsinio Hall. <laughs> you know, we're still here with the guys, both Cleveland and Alonzo, but we have a special episode today. Sure um, this is something that we've been talking about for some time, but if you heard last episode, then you definitely know where we're going. Um, we want to make this thing a regular segment, and... We have two guests here to introduce uh, the segment and themselves, but let me tell you what we're doing today. We have an episode called Ask Jux, and what that means is that we're going to have a segment that's going to talk to the friends of the show, people who listen to the show, and be able to ask us questions and have really, really authentic conversations. Um, we would that would love for them to ask us questions as well, but before we give them the, the chance to introduce themselves, Zoe and Cleveland, anything that you want to say before we get into this thing? Now, I'm just glad to have the guests that we have. I appreciate y'all joining for sure. We have two successful career-oriented women here to give us some great perspective. So we appreciate that for sure. I'll let them introduce themselves. So. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so before he always, that's why you can't go after him. You know, he always goes say it. I'm like, dang, I got nothing left. <laughs> so before before we do that, let me set this up for you. So today's Ask Jux is going to be about dating as a successful woman. And today we're joined by Joanne and Oshira. Uh, ladies, uh, if you don't mind, please introduce yourself by answering the following question. Is your name, what do you do for a living, and how long you've been single? Oshira, let's start with you. Hi, everybody. My name is Oshira. I am a fraud investigator for financial crimes. And I'm... Single, single. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean? You gotta exactly. explain that. <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> nah, first of all, we gotta stop at fraud investigator. That sounds like it's like uh she know what time it is when you walk up. Like there's no <laughs> you right push it. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> all y'all listen, we might have to black her face out because she come after y'all PPP niggas. That's it. <laughs> It's oh over. my god. <laughs> it's a dub for y'all. <laughs> Dang. I was I'm actually a... um 18 years in real estate. So my most of the fraud that I investigate is real estate fraud. Um, mm. but now I'm at the point where I've been doing it for a while. So now it's all types of fraud. But my main focus is more peer to peer, which is like Zelle, Cash App, Venmo, stuff like that. Mm. Mm. Okay. No, no mail fraud, M A L E. <laughs> we gonna There's get into that. Okay. That out there. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for that mail fraud, man. Joanne, well, you know, without further ado, go ahead and dive in. Who or what is your name? What do you do for a living? And how long have you been single? Uh, my name is Joanne. I am a social worker, and I've been single, single for two years. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Do we, Thank you. Yeah, you know do, we, <laughs> do we have a definition for what's the difference between like single, single, and like single? Because you know, if you go to the if you go to get a burger, it's like you get a single burger, and you like that's one thing. <laughs> get a double cheeseburger, that's different. Talk you to know, me. You know, if it could just be that simple. If it could just be that mm. simple in the dating world of being <laughs> just one, like either you're single or you're not, then you wouldn't have to do the single, single thing. It would just be single. But no, that's not how it is in the dating world. Is it like, I, is it like extra single? Like, you know, like when you're hungry and you'll say, I'm hungry, but I'm not hungry, hungry. <laughs> like, is it like that? Like hungry, hungry is like, I can eat a meal. And hungry is like, just give me some fries. Is it similar to that? I think the reason why I say single, single is because I think that if the woman is not getting what she needs and deserves and wants mm. then she's like i can't even give you that title like mm, mm. Can't even got get it. that got it so 
what is the definition if you're like talking to somebody but they're like nah they are like they there right but they not <laughs> they're not sure they're like eh is that single single is that like single and a half <laughs> Single and a half. Come on now. I'm just asking. Okay. So that's one single, not two. <laughs> single and a side. Just, just, just trying to see what's going on. But man. Joanna, this... What Joanne is saying is true too. A lot of people just indecisive. Like they don't know. Um mm. I don't know. I think that and not to sound like crazy biblical, but I think that maybe if we would have just it's so easy to be with the first person you're with because you're coming with no jadedness. Mm. Yeah. But then Pure, innocent. Get, yeah. Then you get older, right? Things your life changes. You go through certain things that, you know, scar you that you gotta work on as an individual. And then you're dealing with, you know, you're you're getting older, you have different things that you want and needs and desires change. And then you're like meeting people that don't match that or mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just or or come too jaded, they're not ready to let some of that trauma down. Right. They yeah. just they, they had their own bumps and bruises. Yo, let's yeah. start there because uh we were talking about this last episode about like dating misalignment. Like what is mm. what has been your all y'all's uh experience when in the dating pool and, and what's the biggest like gap that y'all see? Let me see how she answers it. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, hold on. Um I think probably the biggest misalignment at least when I was in my like mid 20s is just like communication pieces because I feel like at least from my dating experience I've had a lot of men who were not 100% honest in communication and what they wanted mm. what they didn't want so then that leaves you kind of like in this space so that's kind of where, where I was thinking what were you thinking that's because they wasn't single single they was no, no. <laughs> exactly no they were supposed to be single yeah. single <laughs> That's what you thought. You, that's you why needed, they wasn't honest. You needed a fraud investigator for that mail fraud. <laughs> yeah, that's what you yeah, yeah. <laughs> I made that face. She's like, well, I could have helped you <laughs> Yo, I promise sure. you can't have a better job for this conversation than to be a fraud investigator. Like, <laughs> that shit is fire, son. Man, listen, and although I, that's my career, I, I got stories about some scams that people that, you know, dudes that scammed me. So it's... Mm. It's tough. Like, it's not, it's tough. Like, it's not always like, yes, we're smart. Yeah, we're educated. But there's, we're still women. Like, there's, we still want to be kind of like pursued and loved and mm. like taken care of and like, but still have my friend. And so sometimes you trust the wrong person mm -hmm. and they take advantage. But and although you go through whatever you go through in life and relationships or whatever, I've always said, don't ever like, I don't ever want to be so jaded. I always mm. want to give somebody another chance, but you still bring some of that with you. You got to check yourself. You got to be like, oh. Yeah, so, so that's something else. So <laughs> you you mentioned the word jaded a couple of times because I think it's important to highlight that. So where you draw the line between giving somebody another chance and it being like, nah, fam, you fucked up too many times. It's over for you. Like, where, what's, how do you strike that balance? Go ahead, Joanne. <laughs> for me, honestly... It took me to not date for the last two years to finally put my foot down and be like, wow. I'm done. Because done is done. Yeah. It took me like a year you, by myself of healing and then a year of like deliberately not dating. To, are you detoxed? To really like done. Yeah, exactly. I literally oh, was wow. I was making yeah. some terrible decisions. I was entertaining all types of stuff that I, looking back now, I'm like, what the hell are you thinking? I'm sorry. Can There's I so much power in there. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can, say, you can okay. say how you feel it. But I like, I ever detoxed. I don't think I, I detoxed. So, yo, so, bro. so, so. So you got mad you got too. What you gonna detox? I, I, I was 28. I was 28. Thank you. I was 28. <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. Like, wait, 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 wait how, 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 how he weaned himself off sugar. Go ahead, talk to us. <laughs> no, 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 no. Literally, I detox, and I think you know, uh, Oshira was using the term jaded. I was extremely jaded before I found my wife. But I detoxed and I was able to get over all of that stuff, able to check all of that stuff. And that prepared me for finding the one I'm supposed to be with. But yeah, well, let's 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 un let's unpack that because both Cleveland and Joanne have detox. I have never detoxed myself. Never Zoe did. said he never detoxed. Well, well, you, don't actually, have to, you don't have to answer this question because it ain't yeah. about you, Zoe. It ain't about you. Not yet. No, I, no, hear... I, I was talking about the detox, though. That's important, though, because for mm -hmm. other people, it's like like 
it adds to what Oshara was saying, where people they bring that baggage. They don't get over it. They don't release right. those toxins, so to speak. And then they yeah. bring that into the now. I've dated people that didn't detox and brought that on my plate. And I'm like, hold on. But yeah. you take know, it right to the sauna. Yeah, right like <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sweat that out. But for me, <laughs> I I don't think I've ever given anybody a second chance. Oh goodness. Mm. So what? that's why I didn't have to, I don't think I detox. I, I understand. But have you given yourself I under a second chance? Because detox is Ooh. more internal. Than to give myself a second Whoa. chance. <laughs> have you? Heavy. Have you? Hey, I give myself <laughs> multiple chances. <laughs> when I get when I hit the streets. <laughs> I want to hear Joanne. Hit the streets. <laughs> I want to hear uh Joanne from your experience. What are the what are the benefits of a dating detox what have you found out on the other side of it that you didn't know beforehand it took that whole detox period for me to really know who i was what i wanted what mm. i didn't want and realize why i was staying in the situations that i was staying in and to mm -hmm. be honest it was literally just me seeking like to be cared for to be loved to like that one in that partnership with somebody um and then i kind of found it in myself over the last two years in my detox mm. so that was great that's amazing. And this is this going to transition to one of the questions that I had written down that I want to ask both of you. Uh, Joanne, maybe you had this. Or Shara, maybe you have these now. What are your non-negotiables, right? Pre-detox, post-detox, what are your non-negotiables? Give me two non-negotiables that you just do not back down from. Or Shara, we'll start with you. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can see her face. She's like, I mean, do you want to know my non <laughs> She got like lazy. I feel like she got a full clip real ready to go in. Like, that she face was like, yo, I'm about to unload on you. I got um, a couple. Obviously, number one, I gotta I gotta find somebody that's gonna like accept my son. Mm. Right, because mm -hmm. right. you don't only really gotta love me, but you gotta there gotta be a space there for my kid. And I'm not saying he needs a father because he got that, but that's important to me. That's right. important. And number two, um, financially, you gotta be stable, bro. I can't be with a man that can't even give fifty percent. I can't do that. Mm. Let, Let me hold Let me hold something. I was about to ask. Uh, I, I knew it. I knew it. You knew I was like, I was like, I was like, like, should, should we go in so soon? Because I didn't know what that was going to be. But let me, but let me, can I oh, hold, hold on? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, right. But let's say I am financially more stable, right? Do the bread with And, right? right? And we have, you know, our expenses. And mm -hmm. maybe right now you can't give me 50%. Mm -hmm. All right. But you got to tell me what you can give me. I respect I can that. give you 30% for five years. And then let's talk about it then. Cause I want to pay off this debt. Cause I got these plans that I want us to progress. Like what, well, let's talk about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, I understand that. So stable, stable. But it ain't just... free 99. <laughs> 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 <Free 99. laughs> <laughs> it's not that. No, nah, that that makes a lot of That's sense to me. So, st stable is literally that is stable. Make sure you got some steady income coming in, and that you could provide towards the household. So, even if it's not you're matching what I bring in, at least be steady, at least be consistent. I can and, respect that. And fiscally responsible. That's and the fiscally thing. responsible because somebody can bread. be making bread too, <laughs> and they they you know mm -hmm. spending oh, it as fast like, as they're getting it. So, I, so I think y'all think y'all answering for her. Because I think that y'all making it easy. I, because I, there's a question that I want to ask, which is what number is stable? Because I don't, I don't, if you got your <laughs> shit together, if you got your shit together, I don't, it'll be hard for me to believe that she's going to get somebody five years paying 30%. This is not a, a used car. I doubt you're going to do that. I feel like maybe after two or three, you're like, yo, my man, yo, 60 man. months? No, 60 <laughs> months? <laughs> <laughs> The Civic is should have been paid off by now. I need you to figure this shit out. <laughs> that's what um, is. what's stable. I gotta hear from no, Joanne. I need to hear from Joanne. I want to hear Joanne. Well, let's Joanne. find out what Joanne's two are first. Yeah, yeah, yeah I need to do that. <laughs> so, I, I think my first is gonna be kind of like Oshara. I have a daughter, 
So I need to know that you're not only going to care about me, but you're also going to care about my daughter. And yes, she does have a dad. So she doesn't need a father or a significant, like a, my partner to be one of her parents, but mm -hmm. they need to respect that I have a child and treat my child the way that I would treat the, their child if they had one. Um, and then also morals. I, our morals have to align because I've been in a relationship or yeah, I've been in a relationship and our morals did not align. And it was, mm. it was bad. And I ignored it in the beginning. So I was like, ah, oh, maybe, you know, in that beginning stage, I was like, it's fine. We'll work through whatever that is. Like I can kind of change his mind now. Oh, change his mind is a whole other conversation. Give me, yeah. a peek, give me a peek behind the curtain as to what was a moral misalignment. What was something that you were like, no, no, you can't do this. We're not, we're not doing this. There was a conversation that we had had and it was about like having kids. And I guess one of his friends was going through a really bad custody battle with the child's mom. And he was like, if I have a child by somebody and they ever try to take me to court, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm not paying them. And I'm not going to see that kid. Like, I don't care about that kid. Whoa. And I'm just oh, like, yeah, nah, hit the door. Hey, that's money. a red flag. <laughs> good, good, that's a good red flag. Good decision, yeah. Joanne. Great good decision. decision. <laughs> I want to I stick on the kids topic real quick. Cause mm -hmm. I had a, I had a similar situation, right? Going into my relationship. I was a single parent. And having someone that could care for my daughter was like a major thing. It was different for me, though, because at the time, that person wasn't around. So I was looking for someone more motherly and endearing. So what does it look like for a person coming into a relationship with you both and they have a stable father figure? Like, what does that relationship look like specifically? Like, are they friends? Are they the homie? Like, are they like the, the uncle type vibe? I just, I'm just oh, wondering don't give me, because don't it was give me completely uncle. different. I get creep. I get creep <laughs> vibes in here, Uncle. Right? This is my uncle. uncle. Yeah, uncle, uncle knocking my walls down, but he bringing my kids ice cream. Like, no, we're not. no, no, no. But like, what does that? What does that look like? Just, I'm just curious. Like, what do you envision that relationship being like? I think that what I, uh, um, <clears throat> the person that I am dating, he he loved on my son, and they started building a relationship little by little. In the beginning, my son was like. Like like a cat, like nah. <laughs> he was nah. not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he mm -hmm. was not with it, and then um he started. You know they had the baseball thing in common, so then they would go play baseball at the park, right? Then he started hearing what he would like. You know back then my son was into like Naruto, so he started getting him some Naruto stuff. Like then they started like he started doing like things because he knew that he had to like. My son had to also kind of like not fall in love with him, but love on him too. Right, right. And yeah. that's exactly what happened. And then it was like, damn, like now my son was writing papers in school. Like my stepfather and I, blah, mm. blah, blah. And he gave him the title. Mm. It wasn't. And that's how you know it's just done. It's the approval, basically. right? It's yeah. Just, it's organic. Match, yeah. It's organic. Yeah, that. It's just It just flows and it happens. And I didn't mm. have to have the conversation or what do you feel about this person? Or and me and him broke up, you know. And now we're trying to figure think some things out. Okay. Yeah. But it's not figured out yet. If you know, if I'm keeping it real. Yeah. Could you single, I'm... single? Say <laughs> 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 single, single. <laughs> hey, Joey, yeah. what about what about you? Like, is it the, about the same? Is that what you would expect for someone coming into your life? Yeah, I mean. Because, like she said, building that bond and take, kind of taking the initiative to build that bond um, mm. will kind of show me, like, okay, this person is serious and this is someone that I can take seriously. Um, but yeah. if there's no initiative, if there's no, like, even trying to be around when she's around, no, that's that's not happening. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've dated women that had kids that had their fathers in their lives. And from a, obviously, I didn't. I didn't end up with these women, but there was a bit of an intimidation factor if the father's in their life because you don't know where to fit. Although you, I didn't want to be the, that kid's father. It was like, where, where do I, where do I stand? Do, do, I, do I build yeah. bonds with with the child because I don't want to confuse anything, right? But it's also from a male's perspective, there is a bit of like, I'm not sure how to do this. Kudos to the guys that know how. That wasn't something that came naturally to me. Yeah, that's why I asked that question, because like it's, it's one of those challenges, exactly what you said, Mark. like, where do I fit? Like, I'm not the father, but I am involved with your mother. So like, where you're not do the I daddy, fit? you're just daddy. That's it. 
<laughs> if it was that Shut up. I don't I see that's funny. I don't I don't think I ever dated anybody that was had kids. And I my well my personality at that time would have probably been like like if the dad was present. Like I, I do have a tendency for taking over stuff if if I see that there's a void there. I mean y'all know I've done that with some of our friends' kids. Mm-hmm. So but if like the dad is there I might just be like, all right, keep moving, kid. Get out of here. Like that's, 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 how, that's, how, that's how that's how I felt. But but I mean, to each his own. But have y'all experienced the hesitation to be one with your kids' lives with with guys based on the fact that their fathers are present? Um, I have not. I don't understand that. <laughs> you said you don't understand it? Yeah, no, run it back. Oh, so basically, like what we're saying is that I can speak for myself. If I was dating a woman with kids and their father was present, which is a bonus. I probably would be a little more hesitant to build a relationship with the child because I that's not my role, so to speak. I probably would need clearance from you to say, like, yo, you should probably talk to him. And I'm like, all right, so that means no, that no, you I want me to. Your I, did, I didn't understand so much the question that you asked. Oh, have y'all experienced men who are more hesitant to build bonds with your kid? I think Joanne said no, she hasn't experienced it, right? No, I haven't. I haven't experienced that yet. I mean, my daughter's only four, so it's not that much of a time gap for me to experience that, but I'm sure it'll mm. be happening soon. Not the hesitance part, but dating with having a child. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the detox is over? It's over? <sighs> I'm slowly <laughs> crawling. I'm slowly <laughs> crawling out of my detox. Very slowly and very, Jamie will tell you, I'm very cautiously and slowly crawling out very, of it. <laughs> very, very. As you, as you should be. As you should be, though. I mean, sugar's addictive, man. You got to make sure you ease that in. You got to go back slowly. You can't just go back to just eating everything. It's, you gotta, gotta... And then you see things that your perspective is different now. So you'll be able to spot the frauds a lot quicker than you without, could. Without Oshira. Without Oshira. Without Oshira. Exactly. Without the, the everyday <laughs> usage of it. Like. You're here in the first conversation. You'll be like, yo, this dude is a fraud. He's full yeah. of Yes and no. I think that it's a learning journey. I think that mm. when I did my detox... I had to, I I was dating the same guy, like, over Mm, and over. I'm like, mm. what the hell is going on? And why is this possibly happening? Right? Mm. And I'm like, yo, I need to step back and truly love myself. Like, and at least try and see what other people was, what other people would see in me, because I wasn't seeing that. Mm. And that shit is real, like, and, yo, and then you start making, like, they say the worst thing you could ever do in life is pick somebody to date when you're not in a good place because you're right. going to pick somebody in that low level. You're not going to pick right. somebody, you know, where you want to be. So that's right. why, mm-hmm. that's why you step back because you got to learn to re-love yourself so that you can stop making that choice and start making different choices. I was just going to say you build this type for yourself. And then when you're making a decision to date, you keep repeating and finding that same type, whether consciously or sub- subconsciously. It's like, I like this type of person, but this type of person is always like this. And until you take that time to step back, it's hard to like really reevaluate that. That type sucks, actually. Like, you know right. what I mean? And not only, but the or type sucks for, for me. Or sucks for me. Physical. Maybe they don't suck. but Right. It wasn't physical, the type <laughs> yeah. of me. It was the same story repeating itself in different mm-hmm. bodies, like different looks. Mm-hmm. Like So I'm like, so I couldn't say, oh, yeah, I got a type. You know, everybody got like a type that you physically attract. You'd be like, yeah, I'm not going to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, oh, yeah, he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not so going to. <laughs> that brings you to I'm another single, question. I'm single, single. <laughs> <Just, laughs> that brings you to another question. How can you like unlearn your type whether both psychological or physical if it's not working how do you unlearn that that level of like dating the same guy because you can still detox and go right back to the same food you're like ah i love mcdonald's though so it is what it is um and some people are willing to be hurt they want to die by that type like nah hella high water this who i'm going to have so how do you unlearn that and proceed with caution if I can answer first. So I actually, out of my two year detox, and of course, who resurfaces, you know, the person that I was dealing mm. with prior. And it's like, look at, you, look must, at God. you must know that I'm over it. You must that's know. The devil. That's why you're here. Yeah, I know. It is. <laughs> Some demons. It's the devil. It definitely <laughs> was. Um, but I think um, it's less of like unlearning to not like that type and more of seeing the red flags 
and seeing the, mm. the things that pop out at you now that you've been through it. Like you kind of had that space, you kind of learned what you needed to learn and then you see it. And then seeing that person again, it's like, how did I miss all this? Oh, I was just mm. ignoring it. I was just ignoring it because mm. there's no way that I should have been dealing with this constantly. Um, but yeah, so for me, I didn't, I don't think I really unlearned anything, but I definitely was able to identify a lot of where my issues were coming from, why I was choosing, who I was choosing, why I was staying when I should have left. I think that's more of how my detox worked. Mm. I think for me, it's more, you have to make a conscious effort to like really put in that work to catch it. You get it? Like, let me not do what I did the last time or yo, and not to get all churchy. When stuff was going down with me, don't I don't worry, Cleveland's here. <laughs> <laughs> pray, man, I used to pray to God, like, God, I swear to you, you give me the signs in the beginning. I'm just like, you really <laughs> save me. like, you really gotta save me. Man, and the girls were sliding the DM. I know you went out with my man last night. Like, you be yo, like, oh, God, what ask and you God. shall receive. <laughs> Word <laughs> up. Look at God. He yeah. said things happen Woo. like that. Things have happened to me Jeez. like that. And I'm like, you see, it's that gut feeling or that instinct. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, the old me would have been like, nah, let me just give him another chance. You know, everybody always, mm -hmm. you, you know, let me just give him another chance. Another, And then you get stuck there to making the same decision all over again in a different person, in a different body. And it's, it's like, oh, my mm. God. Well, here's, here's, a quick, here's a quick question for both of y'all. Have y'all... A, have you ever broken up with someone? And number two, is that difficult for you to do? Hell no. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jesus. Um, for me, yeah. Um, I So I was the person that I was dating before. I'm going to talk about the morals thing. I broke up with him. And then I felt guilty. Like, I felt bad for breaking yeah. up with him. See, and, I knew that this was going to be and, a thing. And I, and I took him back. Like, I was like, okay, it's fine. I, I called him. I was like, I took if you want to come over. I was just playing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I just so said like, that to get you mad. <laughs> okay, talk to Tom so Brady. It was so bad. I can't believe. I just I just shake my head and like, what were you doing? But yeah, so, I. Can I, I ask another know. question on that? Can I? So after you, <laughs> if you don't mind, after you reneged right <laughs> on, on, on the breakup right <laughs> on the breakup. after you changed your mind what if he was wasn't it, black alonzo shut up fool <laughs> <laughs> was there a point in time where you was like let, like how fast did it happen where you was like damn why did i do that like why did i go like was it quick was you halfway hanging up the phone like i don't know what i just did or like three seconds later <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you mean do you mean the time that it took to break up with him and then call him back? No, no. once you called him back and then you were like, oh, shit, oh, like, why okay. did I call him back like that? Probably a few days, probably like a day or two, wow. maybe two oh. or three days. And he showed his ass too quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think because before it was just kind of, we see each other every day. So I don't, I really don't know what the excuse was, but it did take about one to three days for me to be like, well, one, to, one to three business days. It's like, uh, <laughs> days turn around was quick. I'll at least give you a Bank of America five to seven. I give you five to seven. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That was like prime two days later. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. But I'm That's interested cool. to know how soon did you call him back after breaking up with him? Like not not when you made your decision, but like you know what? Why did I do that? How how how, how quick was that? He was in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> no, so he was actually at the house and he was getting ready to leave for work, and that's when we had broke up. And he was leaving for work, and I think I waited until I knew that he was gonna be at work, and I just I called like I know you just got to work, but you can call. Oh, oh man, his whole day was <laughs> he, he was cursing people out at work. He knocked over the coffee. <laughs> nah, he, he was happy. <laughs> no, 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 no. She tried nah, to come she back with him. She said she brought him back. Oh, she said he back. Oh, she said he could come back. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that was a good day for him. Then. Bartender, yeah, oh, everybody was getting free shots. Free shots. <laughs> Round on me. <laughs> I got my baby back. <laughs> oh, I got my baby. <laughs> then she was gone in sixty seconds. <laughs> she, was <laughs> <over>. <laughs> she was over. <laughs> Wait, shout out, shout out to that guy. For Joanne, yeah. do you think, how many times would you say that happened throughout your relationship? The back and forth? Just that once. Because oh. the last time I left, I was done. Because I really wasn't in it. So, and I knew that. But mm. you want to know, I've had 
there have been two relationships or situations that I've had that I've gone back and forth for years, like before my detox that I've gone back and forth. Like I am, a, I was a habit, habitual Tigger backer. Habitual lies. <laughs> Habitual <laughs> tigger backer. That's not a word. That's not a word. That should be Somebody has that. That's that's getting down. That's getting wrote. It might be the name of the episode. Habitual that tigger backer. Might be the, <laughs> might be the name of the episode. Tigger backer. <laughs> the quicker picker upper tigger backer. <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> Damn. I'm sorry. Answer your same question. How about you? With your, with the guy that you were talking about, that you are. You know, entertaining now. Has it been a, a a history of ups and downs? Gone today, here back tomorrow. No, no. I will say that out of um the people I've dated in my past, if I've broken up with you, I don't go back. This is the only guy mm. that I broke up with, and I'm entertaining to come back. The only one. And like I love him, you know, but yeah. I know I need more than love. That's, and I, that's and I'm fact. and I'm and I don't want it to sound like fucked up, and I don't want it to sound like crazy or. But can nobody tell me that? Yes, you love your wife. Yeah, I love my husband. But bro, I need more than love, bro. <laughs> like, this is true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, love is from, love is in a feeling. Now, now here is the question that I think people are wondering: from a single woman's perspective, what do you think is missing? outside of just love what else do you think is required in order to make it so that you get what you're looking for and i want both of y'all to answer this question if you can obviously there you need communication we got to talk about things and and not everything is always going to be the nice things that we got to talk about some things are going to be um maybe like deep-rooted stuff that we need to address so that mm -hmm. we can get to the happily ever after part you know the 40 years you know stuff like that we got to talk mm -hmm. about certain things. Um, I also think there has to be a sense of respect. Some, you got to have respect for this person. You can't be disrespectful because mm. this is your best friend, your wife, your husband, the person you're trying to build dreams with, the person you're going to lay next to. I got to trust you, bro. I, I got a violin for this shit. Me, but I, I also got to trust you with my kid. Right. Like, I got to mm -hmm. I gotta really rock out for you, but... Let's also talk about, you know, where are we going to live? What kind of life do we want? You know, let's talk about, are we going to invest in this 401k? Are we going to do some stocks? Do you want to, mm. you know, let's talk about how we're going to change our legacy. Or what does that look like for you? You know, talk to me about how it was when you was growing up. Do you have a dad? How was that? How was your relationship with your dad? Do you have siblings? Like, you got to talk about all of that. Because I'm it, not by, just by ma what? marrying you. Like, I'm married. By date number you. three? Like, by date number three or four. By date three? No. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, but you're you're making amazing points. And I think that after Joanne, I want to hear from Cleveland and Zoe, and I'm going to make Cleveland go first because I want Zoe to suffer. I want to see how, what y'all think is required more than love that is needed to make someone, because I'm not married yet, I'm engaged, but I want to hear from y'all. But Joanne, how about you? What do you think is needed on top of love in order for you to be in a fruitful, sustainable relationship? I would say also respect. I would say I want to be not just your partner in a relationship, but I want to be like your best friend. Like we should be best friends. We should have that type of bond where if you have whatever's going on, each of you to come to me and talk to me. Um, I feel like they need to have like not conflict resolution because we're not in the office, but you need to be able to be mature enough to have <laughs> conversations. Mm -hmm. And like, if we're having an issue where there's a problem that you're able to voice that you're able to like label your emotions and tell me what's wrong. Um, and I'm also going to do the same thing and know mm -hmm. that you can be there and listen to why I'm feeling what I'm feeling and not be dismissive about it. Um, so I think those are some of the important things for me right now that I've noticed that I, I definitely need. Now, before you go Cleveland, I want to ask this one question. I want Zoe, so answer this question, I don't want Cleveland to explain. So do you think that their expectations are realistic? Yes, I think they are. I think okay. uh yeah, I think that I think they're realistic. Based off of what I've heard today, I think the I don't see I don't see what's wrong. <laughs> Based on what I've heard today. Yeah, now okay. I don't know if they, we didn't get to all the expectations. That we might done. it might be so, We're done. Yeah, yeah. But I think so so far so good. I think it's it's valid. Okay, now Cleveland, back to you. Do you think that 
I, I want to I want to know how what they said in terms of what is missing. How does that stack up for you, who was a single man? I don't know three four years ago, based on what you were looking for. Like, how does there how does that compounding list that they made sound to you? It's that list to me is love. Like, I don't think there's love and then that. That's a part of love. Like, so to me, love is not a feeling. Love comes with feelings, but it's not a feeling. Love is a set of actions that you'll have towards somebody, whether they get on your nerves or whether you're happy with them, whether you're joyous with them. You'll always treat them the same. I can get on my wife's nerves right now, but if she goes somewhere and she sees a pair of, a pair of Jordans that I really want, she'll still pick it up for me. She'll still bring me home something to eat. Like, you know what I mean? To me, well, that's love. Cook. So that she's, she's still going to cook. Well, I do most of the cooking, but, you know, she'll still clean. You know what I'm saying? She'll, right. she'll do she the laundry. Part. She plays a <laughs> part. But, like, you know what I mean? I think that's what it is, man. And I think when we get out of the mindset of, like, these feelings that you have towards someone, because feelings are fleeting. You yeah. could really like somebody today and they can get on your nerves tomorrow. But, like, are you still able to respect them? Are you still, still able to communicate with them? To me, that's... What you described is love. I don't think it's on top of love. I think that actually is love. That's the way I see it. I also think that a part of that whole journey, like women finding the, the person or men finding their, their person, I'll speak for me, is like, I also want to know what you want. Like you as a man, mm -hmm. like, what do you like? What don't you like? Like, even if it's sexual or not, you want it like this, you want it like, talk to me. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what right, I'm right. <laughs> you know, that's important. Like, let's make it happen. And I also want to be your best friend, like Joanne said, but you still got to be my man. Meaning, mm. okay, we still talk about that. Go out. We still got to fall in love. We still got to have our time. We still got to mm -hmm. disconnect. Romance. I still want to be, I still want to look at you and be like, oh, I can't wait to get home tonight. Like, mm -hmm. even though we might have 15 years together. You still gotta mm -hmm. you gotta pour into that part of your relationship because if you don't, then it's whack. Then you go out and somebody talks to you in your ear and might say something that you like, and you're like, hmm. you don't uh -oh. want that. That's, uh oh, uh -huh. you don't want that. Uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> wait a minute, no. we <laughs> don't want that. You don't want not that. Not at all. Feel that for your person, and it's not. It's still kind of like not work, but you still gotta put some, work. Yeah, effort into your marriage. You know, you gotta put mm -hmm. work into it too. I feel like anything and, that is the word ship requires work, partnership, relationship, everything. <laughs> right. That's a fact. That's, That's actually a fact. But you know what? Like Cleveland's married, those married, I'm engaged. I think that it's uh there's a learning curve that comes with being able to to execute on these things. And sometimes it is fucked up. Sometimes relationships that you've had that were that you thought was it was a training ground for the next thing. And everyone that you experience ends up being a learning journey, whether you stay with that person or not. And sometimes you find that match where y'all are ready to grow together. But in my case, there wasn't, I was never okay. I was never okay with settling or being like, I'm out of here. And I was cool with that. But that's, I feel like that's rare, right? But knowing your value system, right? Having your, your non-negotiables, the things that you are okay with, you're not okay with not having, number one. And number two, being so dedicated to making sure that your personal development is on point, that you bring in your best self. The, the way I like to say this is like, you can't invite somebody over to your house if it's dirty. Clean your shit up. Clean your shit up. And it's not pretty. It's not nice. But sometimes you got to look into that, you know, your coat closet, like I ain't organized this in a minute. It's time to organize that coat closet. Exactly. So, and that coat closet is hidden. Nobody sees it. Only you see it when you mm -hmm. put your coat in there after a long day. But it's those moments where you got to like take inventory of what is it, what is it that you've been uh, neglecting and what energy can you put into making that better? All right, so you got to follow Cleveland. Nope. Sorry, no. <laughs> I'm answering for myself. Well a wise, no, you already did. No, it's, yeah. uh, you already a, wise, a wise woman once said that um, love is blind and it'll take <laughs> over your mind. <laughs> what you think is love is true. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. You have to you elevate, elevate and, find. and find. So I think that's very accurate. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I think... Um, Apostle, Apostle Eve, I think her name was. Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> the psalmist. Yeah, Eve. that's what it was. <laughs> so psalms Eve. Um... I think uh, there the attributes that we're given were definitely is is more than that. It's definitely some best friend. It's definitely um, 
they have to know you, right? And they have to want to, like Shari said, work. It's, the work is nonstop. Like it's not. It, it does. You always have to work because people change, things right. change, situations change. Whether it's financially, whether it's physically, mm-hmm. whatever, and you gotta be willing to work or adjust. You know what I mean? But right. if that person is knows you and is like your friend, then they should be willing to. It shouldn't be forced. It shouldn't be like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you should want to do something for them. You should want, like, whatever you're doing in your natural day should, like, the first person you spoke, like, I call is like, yo, something crazy. I can see somebody, I seen two dudes collide on bicycles today in New York, <laughs> right? And I call Ooh, my wife, like, yo, you're not going to believe all, that. First of all, come on, yeah. it's a bicycle. Son, the New York <laughs> City, nah, son. It's a bicycle. Nah, because bikes sometimes be confused oh, with motorcycles. Oh, you can think, yeah, yeah, I feel you. But in New York, like, these dudes be wilding on these, like, delivery dudes. <laughs> and I see them wild. So I'm like, the first time I got up on a bicycle, bro. Yo, it's wild. First of all, your wife, your wife should have ground you up for saying bicycle on the phone to her at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> That's what she should Yeah, that's true, right? <laughs> but Who I'm like, <laughs> I, I just want, to, I want people to be clear, okay? Because you say bike, you think it's a motorcycle. But you're from New York. You ain't raised with no bicycle. He's from, <laughs> he's, he's from South Brunswick, New Jersey, O'Shaughnessy. No, I, I, live, I lived in Trenton longer than I did for that. So. <laughs> nah, but so like, that's the first person I call something, you know what I mean, funny or to share or whatever an idea. So it's like, okay, I, that's, where you should be mentally right but like when i get up and do certain things i don't just do it for me with in, intent it has to be like mm-hmm. her in the in the in the process like whether mm-hmm. like you said getting food or doing something or even just me working out i don't work out just for me i work out so that way she don't look at me crazy like look at this oh movie. zo you got a fire theory i'm not sure if you remember but you told me like the coach and the player how they how they rotate positions when you're in a relationship do you remember, oh, yeah. you remember what you told talk talk to me about I, I think that's important for people to hear so like like when people are le- when leading like leading um there's different roles right and sometimes the roles switch at times right mm-hmm. and i've learned this because my parents have been married for 32 years and i i watched it i witnessed it you know what i mean so there's a time where like you may lead and you direct which is like what the coaches do and as the player you just follow suit what's the play okay boom i'm doing that and then there's other times where you got to be able to take that back seat you know what i mean mm-hmm. it, i'm an a-type personality but i've learned to chill out and certain situations don't call for my energy or for me to do certain things so that is like key to know your role and also know like the time and place. And when you have that chemistry, it, yeah. it like comes naturally. That chemistry is what does it, where you can feed off each other energy and then you take it from there. So, And that's an amazing thing that I wanted to make sure I highlight because number one, that whole best friend thing doesn't come overnight, right? There's a lot of work right. that comes into it. Now I have to ask y'all a question. And I'm going to give you uh, some some uh, an analogy that kind of makes sense. Hope it makes sense. So, for my day job, I work. I'm not a recruiter. I work within a recruiting organization, right? So, when you're looking to fill a role, you may have gone through five candidates, brought them on site for interviews. You just can't find the right person, and then you look into like the bottom of the list, right? You look, you like, you look to see somebody that applied months ago. And you're like, why haven't I given this person a shot? Might give them an interview and you're like, damn, they get the job because you had to dig back. Now, women have friend zones, right? Oh. Women have <laughs> women have friend zones and they typically demote guys that may be eligible because of, eh, you don't fit the role, right? But have you dug back into your bag because you're single, maybe single, single, and thought, you know what, maybe, maybe I should give him a shot because... When I'm targeting these people, it's not working. Have y'all opened up your friend zone bag and, and going in there and see what was going on? I need to hear Joanne because she looked her face just <laughs> she, she, she was like go something just <laughs> 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 I said I was a habitual taker backer. So we didn't actually <laughs> date per se. We were friends, but I knew that there was an interest there. Um, okay. but we never did anything. I ended up moving because I went to school in New York for undergrad. Um, because that's how far I have to go back. But I, no, I'm not going to say now, but there is a time that this person kind of reappeared. And I was like, wait, 
I forgot about you. You were, you were. Mm. Nothing really happened that was bad where I was like, nope, not gonna happen. If we just kind of fell off. So in that aspect, yes, I I have um, entertained somebody who wasn't necessarily friend zone, but was kind of like was there but wasn't there. Have you gone back after this guy? Have you have you? Te- when the last time you, you looked into your friend zone uh, bag? Do you have anybody in the friend zone? I think <laughs> they, 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 oh, no. the it's always a couple in the tuck. It's always a couple in the tuck, so like I mean, nah, he's cool. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, so before my detox work? period, there were a lot of people in the friend zone, but I feel like and then I also had a had a kid. So my friend zone kind of trickled trickled away after that too. So nah, I had should, a kid. That should, that should be baby detox. shower gifts at that point. Huh? The friends are turning the baby shower gifts at that point. Seriously, like, like we friends. But if, they, but if you had a kid, they would, and they were friend zone. They might still have been there through it. All. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that one. I did have one. Yeah. And that, always, that, what yeah. I'm trying to tell you, I know some loyalists that live. Yeah. I did. I did. <laughs> live in the zone. They waiting. Can't wait. Like, come uh, here, girl. I got a shoulder you can cry on. Oh, shower. How about you? I could be, be your best friend. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. I was your best friend. <laughs> have have you have you taken a look at your friend zone and begin to reassess people that's in there? Um, I think I did that two years ago prior to me meeting, me meeting the person that I'm kind of like dating now. Mm-hmm. Um, and you entertain it for a little bit. Um, but you know, you just I know what I want. And when you know what you want, it's like, yeah, I know that's why you're in the friend zone, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, damn. damn. Friends is like the worst place to ever be, bro. If you don't want to be there, give me yeah. like, I mean, I, I, I can, I, I can, I can understand. But I think sometimes we may have the uh, you may get in your own way, right? Because you know, maybe those people weren't weren't right. But I feel at this at my age of thirty five that your partner, your for life partner, should be the homie first. Whether there's a connection mm-hmm. initially. I right. think that it's important for that person to be like, yo, whenever they're, whenever y'all having a, uh, like it's like Zoe saying, if y'all having like a, a rough day and you see something that's funny, y'all should be able to laugh about it. Cause it's like, my fiance, that's my, that's my nigga. I love her. Like we can kick that's it, we can kick it and do like nothing and then switch into being like, oh yeah, I'm also, I'm also your guy. Right. So I think that the foundation of having a connection where y'all are tight as like homies and if y'all weren't together, I was still not not to say that you would break up and then y'all would be cool, but if there was no re- romantic relationship, I would still be her friend because it's like she cool as shit. That's my perspective. How do y'all feel, uh, Cleveland? So, right, let me chime in. On, yeah, I wanted to chime in on that because I think there's a fine line. I think it's about being the homie, but as somebody who's been friend zone many times, don't <laughs> make him the homie. Listen, nah, I- I'm married now, so I, I can speak freely. <laughs> don't make him. Don't I'm make him. Jail. Jail. I'm, I'm, on jail. I'm not on bail. Don't don't make them the homie, but then turn off the romance switch. Because when women turn off the romance switch, it's over. It's off. It's it's, it's, it's off. So now I am only the homie. I might as well be your brother. I might as well be your cousin. We roommates. But, exactly no. bro it's like don't don't make me a family member like don't come to me about dating <laughs> other men like you know what i'm saying like unless that's where we yeah. at but like i'm just saying like don't make me the gay it's best a fine friend. line between being <laughs> being a, exactly bro <laughs> exactly I, I could be the homie just don't turn off the, the romance switch that's all because if the romance switch is off then it's it's a wrap no in my experience there's no hope <laughs> so the gay best friend jesus don't <laughs> I don't want to be that. Like, I, I, when I was single, I used to tell girls that too. Like, look, I'm nice. I'm the homie. But like, I will fuck you. You got you to gotta remember that. Like, you can't not, Yo, you can't forget that. You yeah, can't forget that. I, don't, I agree with that, like, bro. Gotta, we definitely gotta, used to talk about that. <laughs> like, you got to, you have to understand that like, don't change your friends. I got enough friends. friends. I got no, enough I have, friends. I don't need- <laughs> I've, had, I've had dating experiences where women had gotten mad at me for saying, I'm not going to just be your friend. Like, oh, but we can, no, I don't <laughs> want to be your friend. I have friends. I have a lot of friends. <laughs> right. I got enough friends I that, enough. that I need. I don't want another friend right now. But, oh, but no. No. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they get offended. I said no. no they get but offended. That's... They get mad. I've, I've been on dates with guys, and it doesn't work. And it's like, mm-hmm. and I've told them, like, listen, we could be friends. And, and they've told me we could be friends. And it's like, yo, I don't want friends. I don't want friends either. So you just move on. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, that's true. 
I feel exactly. like the phrase "we could just be friends" is just like a light way to say kick, kick yeah, rocks. Yeah, yeah. That's why I've never said that. I've never. <laughs> exactly. If a guy's not interested, in, I've never said we can be friends because yeah. I don't want to be. I don't need to be your friend. Like, and I know you're attracted to me in some type of way. So how can we really be friends? I don't think you can be friends with somebody that you're attracted. Because your friends will lie. They will lie. Yeah. They'll be like, "Yo, we just friends." Uh, nah. No, but they wait. Mm-hmm. They wait yeah, for that detox. Let's go to the Poconos, the friend. Let's go to the Poconos, friend. Exactly. Yeah, no hey, 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 hey. Stop it airing out dirty laundry, bro. Stop airing out dirty <laughs> I laundry. I didn't know. See, see. Oh, Hit dogs going holler. Hit dogs going holler. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> yo, because, dude, yo, I have been, and y'all two know, there was a, a previous time in my life where I was a friend, and I waited in the wings, and then obviously things happened. So Yeah, you boxed out. Yeah, I waited. On purpose. I knew what it was, but so I get that. that but she life. never truly friend you then, Zoe. She that, it, honestly, if that she happened, you were never open. truly a, a buddy. You were she left that door open. Buddy. It was a buddy. Cuddle buddy. Yeah, that a different kind of buddy. Phone. But like, <laughs> what I'm saying is like, you wasn't truly friend zone in that situation. If you were, it'd have been a rat. It'd have been a rat. But, 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 like but at that months. time, but no, but at that time, in Zoe's situation, he there was no boundary crossed and he was keeping the yeah, seat yeah. warm and he probably thought in that moment I w- i'm in the friend zone little did he know that she was allowing him to be there in that capacity right so mm-hmm. that was the difference were well, you thinking like nah just innocent she's like nah i'm gonna let you fuck just not today yeah i didn't wow. know there was a clock on me i mean he's right though that's a it's, that's how it is that's what it's, it's like look wait, wait till i get free then, then we can see what see what this is about but right now we can't do it Pretty much, that's what happened. But then it uh, happened, or it never happened. What did it happen? Yeah, eventually it happened. Oh yeah, I mean. So then the on. light, then the romance switch was never off. You had that's a little bit saying. of a two-way. The romance switch. Was never well, my switch wasn't off, but it, according to that individual, it was never. It wasn't. You know, I was told that we was friends, and I was told, I was told I was put in the friend zone. You know what I'm saying? So I just ran with it, but in my head and and in my room where i told my two line brothers that this ain't i don't know how long this is gonna last but <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna thug this friend thing out we're gonna see what happens but. it's only it's only but so many times you go hit me on a wednesday at 9 45 on the campus and tell me to pull up yeah like what are we doing those, we, those don't even, we won't even study the same thing what you yeah, what about doing yeah here? like like what well, yeah but oh, I, it did eventually i i did i was respectful though i kept the boundary, I didn't cross the Mason Dixon line until like I felt there was a clear So slavery was over. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get back into the shits. Joanne, are you a ghoster? Um, Ooh. You know what? I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I was not because I couldn't I always remember I said I always felt bad for like I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So I felt like I was still entertained. I'd be minimal, minimal entertaining. Um, okay. But now, what about the new people? Now, what about the new people? Like that's the that's the, the existing. Yes, no, I don't. I mean, not, I, I wouldn't say ghost. I I don't. I, it's not a ghost, but you like your you like Casper, like your friendly ghost. Like I don't really want to. Uh, yeah, like it? we can still be friends, and I don't say that. So I don't word. say that. I don't friend zone people. But yeah, I I have kind of just. Oh, Shira, let me. I'm going to venture to say that. You don't ghost people, do you, Oshira? You are. Uh, wait, this wait. ain't working. I am sorry to you and your family. <laughs> but I your am family. leaving. Sheesh. No, no, no. But like, if you're so, what's like, if I'm dating you and we're talking through an app and I'm not really interested, what? and you're like, hey, I haven't heard from you, and I'm like, I don't really want to talk. To oh no, 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 that don't count. That's I mean, different. like, if you if you if you if you met the person and like. There may be some, uh, like, there may be feelings building. Like, maybe your feeling got to like a level three, but his continues, and you're like, eh, "What are we doing here? Like, how do you, oh, how do no, you broach no, those?" I would be, I would be honest. Like, oh, well, you know, I'd be like, "Listen, I don't. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Like, I'm too old. Like, who's gonna play? Like, I'm not old, but you know, <laughs> like, okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play yeah. games. Like, I'm just gonna tell you what it is. Or even back then, like in my 30s or my 20s, I wouldn't, I would just tell you what it is. I never, let's be honest, like, you know? Right. So I feel like we've asked y'all a tremendous amount of questions. And I'm not sure if you all had any questions to ask us, but the floor is yours to ask whatever questions that you would like, if you had any. I actually did it. I was going to um, ask, but then I, you jumped to another question. So my question was to you two. 
who said that you guys would not would not be comfortable um, like stepping in as a of stepping in and building a bond with your significant other or someone that you're dating's child. Were, did you see things getting serious with them, or like how did you if you were getting if you wanted to get serious with them? I feel like you might have wanted to build that bond with that child, right? Or am I wrong? Good question. Looking back, I wasn't serious. Um, and I do think that if I was probably really serious about that person, I I would have asked how do how should I approach it from her? I would have asked her mm. how what's the best way to begin to make bonds with your child? Because but if it's a if it's a woman, if it's a female child, then it's obviously that's a lot more like delicate. But even if with with a boy, the memory is a little different. They're like remembering who I am when he gets older. So I would want to make sure that like it was the right time. And I would lean on her to f- help me figure out what's the right time to make that happen. But looking back, I wasn't serious. Yeah. I think for me, I would, I, I never was in this situation. Like I never dated anybody that had kids already. So I, I, I'm I, just projecting what my mindset was when I was dating, like in my 20s. Mm-hmm. I, that's how I would have reacted depending on where my mindset was. But if I liked the person kids i don't play when it comes to kids you know what i mean so kids are like near and dear to me so like if i just make sure all boundaries and rules and regulations are all you know put out there like how far like if the person's dad is not around and my full throttle if they are around that's the only issue that we might have like because sometimes i know how i am and i will make the dad feel uncomfortable by accident because I might just be more fun or doing doing more things for the kid's memory because I had a dad, so I want, you know what I mean? Like, I, mm-hmm. I just know what it's like to have somebody around and be that person. Um, like, Varun Cleveland would say, like, I, I was like that for um, uh, a friend of ours, kid that was not mine. I never messed with them and never dated them. But I took that role like I was kind of like uncle dad sort of so to speak um mm-hmm. so i i wouldn't have a problem with it but i just i think the the everything gotta be set on the table like where where am i going where, what's my place okay because zo don't know how to half do anything zo no. he does it 100 percent, or he just doesn't do it so that's what would be like <laughs> the biggest issue like how do i like how do I do this without overstepping, so to speak, with with the father that's in the situation? That's what I could see with Zoe, for sure. Yeah. Now you got to answer, good brother. Oh man, uh, my experience is just different. I don't think I would be hesitant. I think, see, and it's different too, because knowing what I know now, like I have different different ways to to kind of frame it. But my thing is, I wouldn't want to be too like authoritarian. Maybe, like I would want to build a friendship with the child. Mm-hmm. and and build my own personal bond with the t- child i wouldn't want to be seen as like here's some other adult in my life telling me what to do like because you're not gonna like me off rip a i'm dating your mama i don't know how you feel about that and with boys <laughs> it's different with boys like oh, yeah. same sex is always more difficult same sex is always more difficult boys with men who are dating their mothers women with women who are dating their fathers Anything I've read about the topic, it's always more difficult in those situations versus when it's a different gender. And I think there's like, here's this man coming into my life it's trying to tell me what to do. Dating my mom, I might not like that. And the same thing with a, a girl and, you know, a, a woman in our life. So to me, it was just, I would probably want to approach it like, all right, let's be cool. You're my little homie. And then we'll figure out in terms of growth, like how, how the discipline comes in and things of that nature. Cleveland, I'm not trying to be uh, Ving Rains from uh, Baby Boy. You ain't trying That's to be me. No, not oh, at yo, all. Nigga. Get your ass over here. Man. Move some eggs. I'm oh, coming man. in. Put some pants Swing. on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Do you think men, even after they're in love with their wife and or maybe their partner, they've been together for a while, whether it's two years, five years, whatever it may be, do you think that if you guys had the opportunity to would you and you know what i mean <laughs> what cheat what cheat yeah would you so you go first Damn, she said, I, I said, yo, wait, young, wait, 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 no, you see what Vi just did there he yeah. did he every said time i, I go last this time you want me to burn the hell like <laughs> damn son i thought we was cool so you have- go first I have a lot of faith in you, Alonzo. I have a okay. tremendous amount of faith in you. I don't have much in myself, but. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> 
Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Like, I don't think it's been presented. I mean, I, I, I think you would think that your morals, your values, and your foundation is strong enough. Um, but I think everything is situational. And so I don't put it past nobody else to do that to me. So that's why I don't ever say that. Never. Like, I'm never... I'm not a never person, like you know what I Wait, mean. Wait, you're saying that somebody would do it to you or you? I'm talking about you, not. To yeah, you. I'm saying I I don't put it past somebody to do it to me. So therefore, I think that I'm not gonna say I would never, like you know what I mean? Because we we have the um, handicap that we're human, right. so humans make mistakes, and it also depends. I feel like on situation, you never know what can happen. Temptation, something may be going wrong in your life in your world i'm not gonna act like like i say i will try my damnedest and strongest to avoid if i have to but i'm not gonna say that things like i'm i'm human like you know what i mean that's just for me it's a super low likelihood that i would do it and here's the reason why i she said that she was a habitual taker backer i was a habitual cheater i was just like look i there was a very few women that I dated that I didn't cheat on and I had a lot of learnings from that and looking back there's a there was a lack of respect that I had for the relationship but that's what I'm looking backwards my situation now with my fiance if I do something wrong I feel like I'm wronging her family like I'm serious like I feel like I'm just I'm fucking up on a royal level like I've also known that when you find something good there's a difference between what I thought was good and what I have now. And like, it's clear that like, I'm not fucking this up. And to be honest, to get deeper into it, I don't even have the propensity to do so. Even when I was being faithful in my old relationships that I ended up cheating in, I knew that I wanted to cheat. Mm. Mm. So right. like, yeah, I mean, but I, I'm, I'm pretty honest with those type of things, which is why I didn't make everybody my girlfriend. I was just like, I'm not in the space to be able to, to be locked down at this moment. And when I thought that I was, I probably was lying to myself to make it so that I was, you know, being mature, but I wasn't. So I'd say no. Yeah, I, I would I would say no as well, only because of my my own experience. I have like layers that I have to get past it in order for me to even think of mm. it and i like my first layer is is the shirt the love and, then the bra. and respect no 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 i knew you was taking it down i was trying to i was trying to get out of it real quick i was like zoda heard something that <laughs> there's this all the clothes you have to discard <laughs> exactly <laughs> no i'm not talking about layers of clothes honestly like it's my first thing is like respect for my wife and not wanting to hurt her like i more more so than the actual act itself and hurting her feelings, I wouldn't want her to give me that whatever nigga look if I said something to her and she just can't believe me no more. That would hurt my feelings. Like, if I say something and she's just like, this nigga over here, like, he was right, just with Keisha right. last night. You know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't take that, bro. So, I think it's hurting my wife. I think the second thing is, like, dishonoring God. Like, I don't want to... I'm so scared that, like, I would do something and then, like, I don't know, something crazy happened or whatever. Um, and then lastly, I would say, like, I don't want to dishonor my family. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my family and her family, if, if so to speak. So, like, I don't want to make that make that mistake. So, for me, it's a, it's a strong no. And and then, but I'm wise enough to know that I'm human, so I would never put myself in a situation, you know, to where it's like it could potentially happen. I don't know, man. They'd be tricky. You, I wouldn't try. What's his name? Uh, the dad from Love and Basketball was like, You think it's not going to happen to you? <laughs> it was like, one I was the in the lobby. <laughs> Then then you one brave one. One. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it to your hotel room and you you gonna turn that down every night quincy <laughs> like, my bad dad that just sound like scripture didn't he <laughs> he was like then there's the one brave one i'm like yo you made it sound like almost acceptable but nah maybe, man maybe like that's how you feel it's yo the thing about cheating though is like it's men are wise enough the wise ones are wise enough to know the situations to try to keep themselves out of like you don't go seeking to put nah, yourself bro. in a situation. Yeah, it's because, yourself. No, because look, hurt people, hurt people. So depending on what happened, like it, we're y'all speaking mm -hmm. from it, like 
remember people do things for merit different reasons like you know what i'm saying yeah. not just not everything is always based on greed like i'm just a greedy motherfucker i just want yeah. some extra box like that, that that's not always the case a lot of times maybe there's a void or there's something going on and it hurt people hurt people or you feel like yo kind of like how uh joanne both of y'all said this where like you were repeating the same thing over and over and over now what what if the situation is like you're repeating your request over and over and over and you feel like there's i was going to go there so yeah yeah you know, like yo, yo this is not hearing me it's, and like i'm pr i'm trying to be good i'm trying to be nice i'm trying to do that but it's like all right you playing like you think I, it's like a game or something let me let me run with that real quick because Oshara said something Oshara said something earlier. Game. It's so important because Oshara said something earlier and we like laughed past it. Like she was like, you know, we got to talk about everything, even when it comes to sex. Like, how do you want to get like that is an important part of a relationship for a man. Absolutely. It is so important and like it can't be neglected. I'm not saying that like if it's not happening, that, that man has a right to go out and cheat. However, like as a man and as a physical being it's very important to have that physical part of the relationship be very present and be available like you know what i'm saying like i'm not saying available. we got to be bouncing off the walls every night however like those conversations about expectations regarding <laughs> it need to be had <laughs> it needs to be had bro and that that will i would say is a it's a deterrent it's a deterrent mm -hmm. I'll say that because, you know, it still could happen, but it's a deterrent for sure. But that's all about uh, love language, right? I think that if right. we talk about that, then, you know, it's just in I as a woman, I feel like if I am going to lay in bed with you and we're going to have sex, you better make sure like like I'm not stressed. I mm -hmm. like shit, we're doing shit together that this is like that. I don't feel like I'm that it's take 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 because when one person feels like they're doing too much and it's not balanced and yeah. then you come with mm. your request you want me to punch you in your face with your request? <laughs> 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 you just like you really want me to like... you, you tried it you're trying it word up i mean oh, that's that's you know, that's a you good gotta point talk about those kind of things like yo i need this from you like because i want it from you because you're my person and like you know you got to talk about even the things that might hurt the other person i like it when you do this or mm -hmm. I, and it's okay because this is your homie right this is your best right. friend right and it's just deliver it in a way that is not like you know they say be brutal. harsh don't be right. so harsh like just try right. to and that that's how i had to fix it because the person that I'm, with, I'm the harsh one i'm okay. the one that's like <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I have to like open your mouth like, the fuck <laughs> shut up fool <laughs> <laughs> shit no, ignore him ignore, <laughs> ignore him <laughs> Yeah, Yo, I'm the I'm the brutal honest one. So that's why I was shot. A lot of times the men are usually like, or stereotypically like the brutally honest ones. But you know, it's 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 a learning. It's a learning. But 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 not just with sex. With like, a lot of communication because mm -hmm. one one uh communication gap that me and my fiance had. She's born and raised in California, um Jersey through and through. So. I may communicate things that I do not enjoy a little more direct. And in the beginning, it may have hurt her feelings. I'm right. I, I still hurt her feelings by accident. I love her, but I'll be, I'll be fucking up. But there is a certain kind of communication pattern that has to be established for me to see, like, I didn't have to say it that way. Right? Like, how can I, I know her language, but sometimes be so stuck on what I want to say that it's just like, I didn't have to do that. Uh, but so there's a lot of areas where growth can happen based on what you present more consistently. And even though you know what to do, you have to double down and like, ah, uh, remove your ego and really deliver and be there for that person. I'll tell you what helps, right? So for Shira and Joy and like, with us three, me, Var, and Cleveland, right? We've known each other since 03 and 04, right? It's a long time, right? And what I do, because I have a tendency of saying things terrible, <laughs> my my go-to is, like, I'll call someone to explain to my significant other, like, yo, can somebody, like, yo, what happens when this happens? 
and then they'll answer it, and then I'm like, see, like I thought I wasn't. <laughs> up, right? So like that's because I don't. This is real. Like, he does, he does like, that. He does I literally like, yo. So I give you a good example, right? The first time when we were just dating, my wife and I was just dating, right? And she did, which I maybe is the only child syndrome. I was the only child for ten years until my sister was born, but. I don't like people picking on my plate without asking, right? I, um, I think that a lot more people have that issue, but I get like OD. Like when my mom, we the way we would sit at the table with my dad was across from me, my sister to my left, my mom, and she would reach on my plate, and then I would just be like, can I be excused from the table? Like, I don't even want to eat no more. I'm done. <laughs> Why did you do that? There's more at the stove. Why you pick on my plate? So I have been like that my whole life, right? So one day she did that, and I'm like, yo, what are you doing? And she's like, what? I'm like, yo, you can't do that. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, hold on. I called my dad. I was like, yo, dad, what happens? And he was like, oh, yeah. I probably <laughs> should have. He, he don't really, like, he got an issue. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I accept it. Yes, I have an issue. But at least now you know my issue. Like, so it's certain, it's like, I only had two real major ones like that. But because I know I had a tendency in my past for saying things very, not brutally honest, like, effed up. Like, I was bad. <laughs> I call them or regularly, like to this day, I'll be like, yo, yep. I like, yo, don't, I, I don't like my socks rolled up. Can you, somebody explain this to her? Like, I don't, <laughs> and then that's my thing. So but, I, that's but my, out. the growth, the growth of Alonzo, I would speak to is that, you know, back in the day when he, when it, when it wasn't his wife or it was just a girl that he was dating, he would call us, but like he would communicate the way that he needed to debate to, 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 to however he felt like was necessary. But I think mm -hmm. the growth is that not only does he call because he wants to know uh, how to communicate it, but he's like, how does this sound? Like, does, is this is this wrong? Like, am I wrong for feeling this way? There's so many there's so many layers of depth that he goes through because he wants to end up doing the right thing and having that thing resolved. But sometimes we all have blind spots, right? And we all use each other to kind of highlight, highlight that blind spot. And this is why it's important to have a community of guys who are similar. I learn from them all the time when it comes to this relationship shit. And I think that the community of being in a relationship or married or engaged is almost as important as learning how to how to be a husband as well on your own. So, yeah, he does it with, with good reason. And I, and I appreciate Zoe doing that because that sets a model for... For me, who is not there yet, as to like, oh, all right, you can kind of chime in with your boys about how right. to make it happen. Yeah. You have a jo circle. I, I yep. need to know, Joanne, are you the are you the brutally honest? Are you like, do you beat around the bush? Like, how, how does how do you articulate your love <laughs> language, so to speak? Well, like, in your relationships, request. yeah. Um, I feel like I'm probably a little bit nicer, but I'm I'm known as the mean one. Wherever I go, I'm typically like the mean one because I am pretty upfront about what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, what I need to say. Um, but I've learned to say it in a nicer way or say it more um, strength based. Okay. Um, so yeah. like, could you not chew like that? Like chew like that? Like <laughs> you know, you know, Joanne, Joanne is the much, one. Too much. Jo Joanne is the one where like I'll send around the drinks and she'll send it, she'll send one back like you can't buy me. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would. I probably like, I didn't ask you to do that. See, <laughs> fucking up the whole vibe. Like, come on, can you can you go talk to her, man? Damn. Yeah, like I'd rather you come talk to me. You don't need to come send me a drink. Like I really will go up to somebody and say that. Like, I got, I got my own money. I got my own money. Yeah, like you can just talk to me. <laughs> Oh no, I'll take the drink. <laughs> oh, I'm like, hey, can not talk to you. <laughs> no, no. Thank hilarious. you. <laughs> the loud, yo, ain't that worse than the loud? Thank you, yo. Because then she just told the whole bar that you got played. <laughs> she could, she could have told the bartender to go tell him thank you. She was like, thank you, <laughs> and then it's over. Um, I want to hear. I want. I want it because we want. We're going to wrap up soon, but I want to hear uh, more fun things. Uh, Oshawa, tell me about the worst date you've ever had. Oof. I don't think I have like a crazy bad. First date? No, oh. you never had like a like a date where it's just like, let me tell you about this when you got to the car. <laughs> oh, you had to have like an escape route where you had to like tell your friend, yo, call me. Like I got. Yeah, I did have one of those. I did. Oh, have okay. One of those. So um, tell us about it. what happened. What will happen on the date? So the guy shows up and I meet him at the at the place, and um, it was just very like super superficial. 
Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's nice to have like nice things and stuff like that. But everything was about um, how much money he has and the car that he drives and da 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 da. And it was just like, ugh, like you are way too into yourself, Poppy. Why she got to throw that in there? <laughs> So I told one of my girls to hit me up and to give me a call. I, and and mm. you know, she gave me a call and I was like, oh my God, I got to get out of here. You know, something happened with my son. My son was little at that time. Um, yeah, he so, was crying. I got to go. <laughs> no, no, like, um, oh, are you sure? I mean, I, I can, I can drive you back. I was like, no, I drove myself here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'll give you a call later on tonight. <laughs> and we did. Still, and we spoke. But he's still I, waiting I for that call. Him. Yeah, no, okay. no, I didn't ghost him, but we spoke about it. And I was just like, look, it's just not going to kind of work out. And, you know, superficially. So, yeah, you're definitely not the the, uh, the type of girl that I would like to date anyway. Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah. Wow. He clapped back oh, like that. Ego. Oh, oh, that's the ego. That's the ego. How dare you? She said, I'm a yeah. baddie. <laughs> baddie. <laughs> that's that, uh, you know, you know the, the good old East Coast. Oh, I don't fucking want your number anyway. Like, as she walked away, like, bro, oh, you got yeah. played already. You already I got know, played. Right? Like, it's it's over. like you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, mm. nothing crazy like that. I think my crazier stories are, like, later on. Like, I, you know, like, it wasn't so oh. much the first date. It was, like, now when I'm more a little and more invested. Mm. Like, that you find out stuff that you're like, what? Like, and mm-hmm. that's even, that's more hurtful than, like, crazy first dates. But I never had, like, any... I had crazy, like, you know, girls trip stuff. That's fun. <laughs> oh, that's, I mean, that's another... Uh, that's, 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 bring her back. That's, yeah, that's that's another another answer. Answer. a violation if we ask for what for more information on that? What I mean, nah, say that for that's another episode. Gonna... <laughs> okay, my bad. Joanne, how about you? I actually haven't had a bad day. If I go out on a date, I expect to be a good one. And luckily, they have all been pretty good, the ones that I've gone on. Well, you know what? Something something that I just worried, thought about, which I want to be serious about. Talk about the safety of going out with a man that you don't know for the very first time. Is that traumatizing when you are like a first date, whether you meet somebody on the app or through a recommendation or like, how is that experience when you are meeting a man for the first time that you and you're going on a date and you're sharing like intimate space with? I chuckled a, li- a little when you said recommendation. I'm like, like a referral? Like, hey. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> you never had a referral? You never had like a, yo, he's seen you, and I think that he's a cool dude, so I yeah, think we should yeah, go on a date. Okay. I okay. Had not that, bad, like, I had a bad not, referral. Not the referral. Too. Not the referral, like, nah, you should try him too. Not that kind of referral. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not based Damn, off experience. Boss, I didn't not want, based not, off experience. Not, not the community peeing, but just the, you yeah. know. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I think that it's a little scary at first, you know, um, especially like when my son was a little younger. So what I used to do, and I still do this to this day, if I go out on a date with some random person and that I've never met, I usually get like as much as information I can from the person. Whether I mean, but it's whatever they're telling me could be fraudulent, right? right? So the main thing I do, though, is once if they're meeting me, let's say if I feel comfortable enough that the person's picking me up from somewhere. Let's say we've been talking for a while and I'm like, damn, it's been a month. We've been FaceTiming, whatever. I'm going to let him pick me up. I'll take a picture of the license plate. All right. Like an Uber. I send it and I send it to my my best friend. And I'm like, if you don't hear from me tonight, I need you to send this to my brother who's a state trooper and he'll figure out what he got to do. <laughs> he so knows like, he, he has the instructions. Sense. Yeah, like things like that, you know. But if it's the first date and I'm not really feeling you the vibe, I'll meet you somewhere. Never been catfish, so I don't know what that's like. Oh. Pretty much like the person that's shown their face is the person that I'm... now you have FaceTime, so it's a little bit right. That's true. That's true. You know, so it's a little bit easier. Usually we'll FaceTime first before you get to meet the person. So you make sure that the person actually looks like their picture. But yeah, you always gotta tell somebody. At least that's how I've handled it. How about how about you, Joanne? Is there any like hesitancy or or like what do you do to make sure that like everything's all good before you go on to date with a random man? Um, so actually I was just talking about this with my coworkers because I was going to go on a date with someone that I hadn't met before. And um, I told them like I was going to drive my car and they was like that at first they kind of questioned me because they're like, why won't you let him drive? And I'm just like, mm-hmm. I'm just meeting this person. I'm not going to let, you know, 
him right. drive me. I drive myself everywhere. Um, and I also share my locations with my cousin, both of my cousins. Um, my mother knows where I am because she nine times out of 10, she's going to have my daughter. Um, mm-hmm. So those are the, the definitely the three things that I do. I share my location. I always drive. Um, and I let my mother know where, I, where I'm going. I think that's something that's underrated as men. I think we might take it for granted. We just show up, right? And I think that we've we've learned on this pod, there's a lot more creepy men than there are not. And I was not privy to how certain dudes was moving out here. Like, so having friends that are women and being like, that happened to you? Like, that's crazy. Like, it's... It's like eye opening, so I wanted to make sure I asked that question to y'all. And we used to be like, "Yo, where y'all meet these guys?" Like, I didn't know these people existed. Mm-hmm. Var and I used Same. to have intense conversations, and I'm like, "Yo, there's people out here that's really like that." Like, because we don't think like that, so it's like strange for us. But they they out there. I I feel I'll be honest to add to that. I actually feel bad for women a lot of times because you have ten times more things to think about than we do when we just showing up. Like. Mm-hmm. Y'all just be like, Yo. we yeah, we just happy to be here. <laughs> and, y'all, and y'all like, y'all gotta, like you said, do I gotta escape? Do I this? They're like, it's so many other things that can go wrong and you always have to be on the defense. And I think that's just like, I don't know. I feel bad. I commend y'all for doing it, but I'm just- For like, sure. Yeah, it's, it, but safety first, right? You just want to make sure you, you get back, so- but right. Bart, to answer your question, I did go on a date with a guy that was missing teeth, and I didn't realize he had no teeth. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. How many? <laughs> Multiples? It was she said front, teeth. Or was it like in the back? <laughs> the back don't count. She didn't say a tooth. Right. She said teeth. Teeth. Let me tell. And that was the one that ended up scamming me later on. That one. Oh. oh. Teeth. Oh, he had no pictures with smiles, <laughs> like wild, wide smile. smile. All mouth. <laughs> Angles. <laughs> Angles. Right? Oh, yeah. my. Yeah. And you got to watch that. When, 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 when we FaceTime, I used to be like, why does he laugh like that? Like. Why he laughs like that? 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 Oh, my God. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Merry <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Yeah, why you laugh like that? Like why that. you laugh like that? Oh, he like covering, doing this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's oh, funny. Yo. Oh, Yo, was, he, was, he, was he an okay looking guy with his mouth closed? Because you can work on the teeth. They got veneers. Nah, you got dental bro, implants. Like, got that dentures. was horrible. Out of all the people that I've ever dated in my life, that was the worst pick. Ah, the worst. bad for the brother. Ooh. That relationship Man. cost me fifteen thousand dollars. Hold on, well, wait a out. minute. Time <laughs> out. How did it get? Yeah, this is getting deep. I thought, thought you were a, I thought you were a fraud investigator. How did we get here? Was it? Were you early in your career? Like you didn't have the skill set yet? Wait, that's so funny. Like, um, I got the job when I got when I started uh, the fraud world. I had already been dealing with him for like a year and some change, on and off. And um, shortly after, I finally broke up with him, and that's it. Yeah. So I, you were like, I was early in my career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In How did he career. get fifteen racks from you? Like, if you don't well, mind all right, sharing. Because he didn't physically get fifteen racks, and I'll keep okay. it short because then you're, nobody's gonna listen to this so damn long. <laughs> <laughs> we can make this a clip. How uh, she got robbed. <laughs> I, I met him on the worst dating site, which I feel like this is where all the scam artists are. I met him on Plenty of Fish. Oh, oh. I had a POF experience. Ah. <laughs> all right. I met him there. When he showed up, he was a light-skinned black brother with green eyes, about five foot ten, super skinny. Like Mark Anthony skinny. You know who Mark Anthony is. Oh, yeah, that's this like you know skinny small frame and um <laughs> i just thought like and a fake jeweler he sold jewelry all right uh, was- oh my god <laughs> if i want nice. jacob long story short he needed a car he didn't have the credit i go put the car under my name uh, all that happened right and he just didn't pick a regular car no he wanted a 550 bmw 
550 series BMW. Man, you can't Yoosh. want nothing if your credit foul. Get out of here. They so here, ride or die, Oshira. <laughs> huh. Ride or die. Yeah. I'll Signed on the data line. And later on, I started finding out, like, you know, his truth. Like, you know, I, I was I was actually his side chick. He had been with a woman for a long time. That was like oh. a, really, a really dark space. And that other woman was um, a stripper. And this is a TV show. She goes, this is stars. <laughs> no, call stars. Mona Scott. Yeah. We're Mona Scott. Like, we didn't <laughs> Yeah, Damn. and later on, like, throughout every, I had to take the car away from him eventually. Then the car was, like, you know, it was, like, under, meaning, like, I owed more than the value of right. the car. Mm -hmm. In order to get rid of that whole situation, I had to go back to BMW. And to keep the car payment at reasonable price, I had to bring <laughs> 15 back. Damn. Ugh. No. Damn. 15 back, guys. All right, Joanne, you up? Beat that. I'm sorry, you got the crown. You got the crown. I'm so sorry I had to go through that. That sounds wow. Oh yeah. my God. And it wasn't such a imagine the financial hit. It was also the emotional. Like right. when I started dating him, I went through a big surgery in my legs and I was like mm. wheelchair bound. Um, I couldn't really walk. I thought I met this guy that had swag and you know. He's from Brooklyn and like typical dude. Like, see, that's why y'all Jersey girls had to stop fucking with these New York dudes and saying, like, chill out, B, chill out. Ah, uh, <laughs> nah, you Jersey, Oshara. You Jersey. I don't give a fuck what you talk about. Y'all is from New Jersey. Var don't, Var don't respect nothing in New York. That's his problem. That's his problem. Oh, see, look, me and Oshara are repping. We repping. Yeah, if, you you spend, repping. if you spend so much time in New Jersey, you a New Jersey person. I don't care. But no. remember, I'm, okay, well, we'll talk about that another time because you yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so needless to say, I, I went through that and I, I, that is why guys though, this is why though, the financial stability for me is very important. Mm. It's Yo, not been burned before. because of this. It's because this comes wasn't just full the, circle. yeah, it comes back, you know? So it's mm. like, in order for me to not feel like I'm being taken advantage of, you mm. gotta bring something to the table, bro. Cause if not, I feel like I'm being used again. I'm, I'm, I'm being the main one. I'm the constant provider, and I can't feel like that. And this brings us to the final question. And Oshara, this is for you because I wanted to ask it. I'm glad you brought this up. What number is stable? <laughs> what do you say going back to that? <laughs> what number is stable? Joanne, feel free to answer if you want to as well. What is what type? How much money does a man have to provide? How much, how much does that make yearly, legally, in order for him to be <laughs> stable? What does the W-2 say? If you had to put a number It on. is tax season. <laughs> I don't have a number. Like, I don't think it's, like I said, I don't, I don't think it's a number. I think it's a conversation. It's a what can you do now? And if mm -hmm. you can't do this now, then what is the plan financially for us to get to where we want to as a family? But what we're not going to do is do the free 99. We're not. <laughs> but it's not a Meaning, number. No, it's not. To me, it's not a number. Not at this. Yeah, it would be dope to meet somebody and be like, oh, yeah. He, he, my girl made bank. Met a guy. Great. Awesome guy. Built her a house in the Hamptons and lived somewhere else in some other freaking full, full Staten Island spot. So could stop working at the age of 30. Has a children. That's great, right? Like, total. But. I don't know. That doesn't speak to me. Why? Because I like my career. Because I want to make my own money. Because I'm just different. Like, so it's not an amount. It's just like, I want us to go on vacation at least mm -hmm. once or twice. You know, I want us to do uh, it. So it's not an amount. It's a lifestyle. Like, well, how can ah. we live? You get it? Where can we go to? I, and, and how can we do it together? Because it's not just... If I'm up right now, I'm up right now. But, bro, can mm -hmm. you get my back later? Because I'm tired of being up. I've been up for, like, a few years right now. Can you hold it down? Like, it's, a, it's an effort. It's not an amount. It's an action. It's like a let's talk mm. about it type of thing. And can you pay for my nails at least once? Because a dude is never I feel that. <laughs> Good old nail. Can you get my nails, dude? Can you get my nails done, Poppy? Because, you know... <laughs> Oh, not now, Poppy. Now, Poppy, good. First of all, the Poppy that was talking about himself yeah, too much. Was, now, <laughs> yeah, that, the second that Poppy is like, I mean, can you pay for these nails, Joanne? What's what's? Do you have a number to, to, for stability, financial so, stability? 
I don't have a number, but I would expect to make at least the same amount that I'm making, at least the same amount. Like if we can be equal, that's fine. I don't expect you to make more than me, um, but I, I don't make a million dollars. I don't make a hundred K. So we need to at least make the same thing. Cause she like, I'm living. So if you can't live like I'm living, then yeah, I can do bad by myself. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> But she said equal. Damn, if I get equal, then we bang, girl. <laughs> <laughs> For all the listeners out there, there we got a cougar on deck. 2.30. 2.30, she said, y'all. 2.30 liquid. <laughs> no bitcoins, none of that. Uh, cash, only, no bonds. 2.30. But it's not. It would be nice to live like in... I don't know. It would be nice to live in like a nice town and maybe put your kid in a private school. I don't know. Things like... Mm-hmm. I, I so now, now it's coming out. Now it's coming out. You know... Maybe like, like 670. No, <laughs> no, <Nah, nah, nah. laughs> Come on. I just... It would be nice, but it's not a necessity. Like, it would be nice to have... It's a bonus. Kids mm-hmm. school. Right. It's a bonus. But if, if, if we can't have the private school, then can at least we be in a better school district... Mm-hmm. You know okay. what I mean? And that's, that's what right. I'm talking about. It's those kind of conversations. And now my son is 12, you know, so maybe it's going to affect him for high school. But especially if you have a little, like, like Joanne has a little girl. You know, mm-hmm. she wants to be somewhere where, you know, her little girl can go to school. And mm-hmm. the, the thing is to, to, for it to be better than what you got. That's how I right. feel. It doesn't have to you gotta be. Add gotta add value. Gotta add value. Just gotta add something. So it doesn't have to be Bel Air Academy. I can't do that. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like something, a little something. And the nails, and the nails. <laughs> and the nails. Get the nails. <laughs> get the nails done. Don't forget them nails. <laughs> Um, yo, it's been a pleasure to have y'all. Thank y'all so much for joining us. Like, I really feel like this was a really enjoyable episode. Hopefully, y'all had a, y'all had a great time. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure if y'all was the intention was to learn something, but I hope you were able to take something uh, from the conversation. Um, let these people know where they can find you on Instagram or things like that if you would like to be followed. If not, then fuck them. <laughs> Well, um, my Instagram is my name, Oshira. O S H A I R A. Holla um, at me. So my, <laughs> so my Instagram is underscore A O J O. So it's A Y O J O. Nice. Make sure we put these on your Instagram for the, the YouTube. Zo, did you want to quickly run through some Zono's topics? I know we are we're pretty yeah, we're pretty yeah, deep yeah. into the pot. Yeah, I got quick joints real quick. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me tee you up. Let me tee you up. Mm. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. So what, so what, so what's the scenario? Hey, yo, Zo knows this. Zo knows that. So light skin. Zo stay black. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, y'all. Yep, and light you don't skin stop. stay black. Don't get it twisted. So this week on Zo knows, we had a couple of things. First and foremost, Tom Brady hit us with the 52 fake out. He retired, yeah. and then two months later said, I've been home too long. These kids getting on my nerves. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm going back to work. Peace. Kids is kidding. Yeah, so... <laughs> He's coming back. He's going he's to, going. I think he's going to retire at 45 because that's what he said he wanted to do originally. So I think this is just like a year just to accomplish his personal goal. Mm-hmm. Um, next, we had the – there's a lot of controversy still with the New York mass mandate because of Kyrie Irving and the whole Brooklyn Nets because none of it makes sense where he can't physically play because he's not vaccinated – but there's a whole stadium of people that may or may not be vaccinated and mm-hmm. or don't have masks. So it's a and he, and he uh, in the front row. Yeah, he's right, right there courtside. So what's the difference between sitting courtside or being 10 more feet on the court? Um, that's a lot of craziness. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but that's like a New York issue. They're saying it's because of the mandate for private sectors to make their own rules. Is he the only so. player, though, that is like that? Uh, as of right now, on the Nets. Yes. No, in, in the league. Oh, I thought it was. Uh, oh, yeah, because other states don't have that. So the other uh, other people. But there, but league. nobody else is allowed to play in road games and not home games, and like nobody has that exception except for him. So then, um, next, uh, we got the Ryan Coogler situation. The guy who uh, wrote uh, Black Panther, the director. That Bank of America situation was a combination of weird nonsense. Um, I kind of seen s- s- like 40% of where old girl was a little shook because the note was a little cryptic that he slid uh, to her as the teller. 
How uh, for y'all who don't know, he wanted to take out twelve thousand dollars, but he wanted to do it discreetly. So he slipped the teller a note saying, "Please, pretty much count the money somewhere else. Be and I want to be discreet." Which kind of gives off a little weird red flag. However, she was wild because he did give his ID and he inserted his card and put the pin in. So I don't know how many thieves do that and why she <laughs> mm -hmm. thought it would be a bank robbery. But I don't know too many bank robbers that are like, oh, here, yeah, take my ID. And I got a whole pin and debit card. Um, so there was some stuff back and forth with Bank of America with that. Uh, I don't, that was, it was a bit much, but I think people got to start using more common sense. And, you know, I have my own black power theories on how she was programmed and she racially mm -hmm. programmed, even though she was black. So, and then uh, <laughs> lastly, I want to give a RIP, well, soon to be RIP. I, I got to check the Googles, but they said uh, Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon, if y'all ever watched wrestling back in the day, they said he oh. uh, he will be getting taken off of uh, life support today. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Yeah, Rest it was just you. like literally right before we logged on, I seen like an alert. I'm like, holy crap. So RIP to Razor Ramon. If you ever watched wrestling as a kid back in the 90s, he was the truth. Yeah, it's official. He, he passed an hour ago. Okay, so they did. They pulled the plug. Kevin Nash, who was his homie, his right-hand man, was the one who, uh, I guess, uh, told the media about it. So Sheesh, man. Everybody well, take a two-pick and throw it at somebody just for Razor Ramon. With go. that said... Uh, so kick, keep the ball and get, give it to the serenity prayer. Yeah, we want to close up first. We want to thank our guest. You guys have been great guests, and it was fun. It was interesting. I learned a lot. I'm not gonna lie. I'm hope hope the uh, the other fellas here learned. Um, hope we gave y'all some things to think about being uh, in our situations. And what we always want to end it, we want to ask God to grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference between the two. Amen. And that has been episode 67. We will see y'all next week.